Welcome to the 11th video in the port series. Remember, that means private, open and responsible technology. So far, I've switched my laptop, tablet, smartphone and cloud services to more privacy-respecting alternatives. And today, I had another member of the family. This, the GTR3 Pro from Amazfit. Join me as I unbox and review the smartwatch and tell you why I bought it in the first place. When it comes to choosing privacy-respecting and open-source technology, you're pretty well set when it comes to computers, just install Linux and try to use as much open-source software as possible. But on mobile devices, that's harder. Ideally, you'd simply just use a Linux distribution on your tablet and phone, but the ecosystem has a long way to go, so going that route would mean having to give up many features of a modern device, not to mention some apps that you've come to rely on. The situation is pretty much the same, if not worse, for smartwatches. There are some pure Linux smartwatches out there, but they're more prototype or development devices rather than consumer-ready daily drivers. On my smartphone and tablet, for example, I've settled on using EOS, which is Android, but de-googled, so you get most of the functionality of Android, but without Google's constant privacy invasion. For a watch, though, eh, it's not that easy. When buying a smartwatch, your options are, well, the Apple Watch, which is the obvious leader here. Um, alternatively, you can buy a smartwatch running Android Wear, with the market leader being Samsung. Now, neither of these options will work for me, though. I already have an Apple Watch, but now that I've gotten rid of most of my other Apple devices, the ecosystem is really limited. As for Samsung watches with Android Wear, well, there's no de-googled version of Android Wear that I know of. So it's not as easy as finding something like EOS, but for watches. So let's look at our options. Being less mature than the desktop, tablet or phone market, our options for a privacy-respecting open-source smartwatch are limited. One device that is promising, however, is the Pine Time, made by Pine64, the makers of the Pine Phone, Pine Tab and Pine Book. The Pine Time is essentially a smartwatch platform which you can then use to run any open-source smartwatch operating system you want. It features a 1.3-inch 240x240 IPS capacitive touch display powered by a Nordic Semiconductor 64 MHz system on a chip. It has 4 MB of storage, with half a MB reserved for OS storage, as well as Bluetooth 5 and Bluetooth Low Energy. Sensors include health tracking with step counting and heart rate detection, and notification access with vibration lift to wake. The Pine Time comes with a 180 mAh battery, which is claimed to last a week. It weighs just 38 grams, it's made from zinc alloy and plastic, and is IP67 dust and water resistant. Incredibly, the watch retails for just $27. Being a watch platform, it's then up to you to choose an operating system for the device. One popular choice is Infinitime which is written specifically for the Pine Time and makes use of all of the capabilities of the device. Now, whilst the Pine Time is an amazing project, which I fully intend to support, even financially, it's still very early days. The watch is more of a platform than a consumer product, and whilst interesting, it will not replace all the functionality you need as a daily driver. An alternative is to flash an open source OS on your existing smartwatch. That's where Asteroid OS comes in. Asteroid is a fully open-source Linux-based OS. It supports a number of smartwatches, including Asus Zen watches, Huawei watches, LG, G-Series, the Tick watch, and others, with more in the pipeline. Feature-wise, Asteroid provides basic apps such as phone notifications, agenda, alarm clock, calculator, uh, remote music controls, a stopwatch, a timer, weather, and so on. The OS is highly customizable, with several themes and watch faces. It also comes with a rich SDK for developers to work with. Now, whilst this is a very promising option, the list of supported watches is limited, and of course, so is the functionality. Moreover, the supported watches tend to be older, and I'd rather get something at least made in the past couple of years as my new smartwatch. So, as with many other things in the Linux smart device ecosystem, 
The future is promising, with some brilliant people working on amazing projects. But I need something now. And that's where the GTR3 Pro comes in. Amazfit is a China-based smart wearable brand owned by Zep Health Corporation, formerly known as Huami Technology. Zep is financially backed by giant Chinese corporation Xiaomi. Established in 2015, the brand focuses on smartwatches and fitness trackers, with the GTR3 Pro released together with the GTR3 and GTS3 as their latest line of smartwatches. Besides the positive reviews, the reason I went with the GTR3 Pro is that the watches do not run Android Wear, which is important to me as I'm trying to avoid the obvious privacy concern associated with Google products. One of the flagship features of the watch, as well as ZepOS, is the battery life. Amazfit claims 12 days of typical usage on a single charge, with the GTR3 Non-Pro Edition claiming 21 days. Now, I'll have to put that to the test myself, but considering my Apple Watch barely lasts a day, I'd be quite happy with just a quarter of what Amazfit is claiming. The GTR3 Pro features a 1.45-inch 331 ppi OLED display, which is rated for a 1000 nit brightness. Technical features and capabilities include Wi-Fi, GPS, 2.3 gigs of music storage, Bluetooth audio and core support, 50 meter water resistance, and sensors for heart rate, blood oxygen, stress, and respiratory rate. According to Amazfit, the device is capable of tracking over 150 sports and fitness activities. The watch is navigated by pushing and twisting a crown, and the secondary button is also provided. Also in the lineup are the GTR3, which has the same battery as the Pro, but loses Wi-Fi, music storage, the microphone and speaker, and Bluetooth audio, as well as having a slightly smaller 1.39-inch display. The GTS3 is similar to the GTR3 non-Pro, but in a rectangular format, very reminiscent of the Apple Watch. So, here we are with the GTR3 Pro. Uh, as you can see here, it says powered by Zep OS. On the back, lots of writing and stuff. On the sides, not really much here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and remove the protective case cover thingy. Okay. There we are. Nice shiny box. I apologize for the reflections, but I still haven't figured out a proper diffuser for my light box. Anywho, um, so I guess uh, this opens uh, how exactly? Uh, okay, from here, from the bottom. And we get the, what I can only assume, yep, that is the Amazfit logo there on the box. It's actually a little bit shiny too. Okay, and we can unbox the thing. And there we are, the watch in all its glory. And I can instantly see that this strap is actually better than I thought, which is a good thing. It says up your game here. Let's uh, go ahead and remove the device. And uh, I guess we'll need to undo the strap, really? Oh, no, okay, we don't need to. <laughs> okay, there it is, that is the watch. Pretty interesting box design here, it kind of fits together like a jigsaw puzzle. And on this side, we have some stuff. Let's see what stuff there is, okay. It is a little booklet, which is actually the product manual in a bajillion different languages. Uh, basically the basic parameters, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Okay, and on the other side, I assume we find the charger, which we do. Really quite a nice, pleasing box design here. And uh, let's go ahead and open this. And there we are. We have a charging puck and basically the watch 
uh, has these two connectors here on the back which you can see and those fit in basically with this so nothing special there it has a type a usb end to it okay now looking at the watch itself uh up your game we'll remove that sticker and there's another sticker here on the back so i'm actually gonna undo this strap several straps are available i got this leather one um but i've also ordered a metal strap which is compatible with the device since i tend to prefer my watches with metal straps yeah and so this is it it feels very very light definitely lighter than my apple watch but to be fair my apple watch does have a metal strap still very light on the back here you can see whoops <laughs> on the back here you can see the sensor this is for heart rate tracking and stuff like that and these are the two contact points um uh, where the charging happens on this side there's pretty much nothing and on this side here you can see the crown okay which you can click and you can rotate and obviously there is this button here for some other actions and the strap itself you, you can see it comes with these quick release uh, sliders here so it should be fairly easy to replace these with your own straps should you wish to change them so that is the uh, GTR3 Pro now comparing it to my Apple watch I mean yes it does feel slightly lighter and also the crown on the Apple watch does feel better than this crown this seems to be weighted and padded when you turn it whereas this thing seems much looser but then again I mean it is sort of to be expected this is a much much more expensive device and the loop itself does add quite a bit of heft to it even though this is the aluminium one okay so let's go ahead and power it on so i'll click and hold here and the watch just vibrated and there we go we get the ma's fit logo and we can go through the initial setup so i can scroll as you can see using the the, the crown um and i guess i'll choose english and then basically it says download the mobile app and bind the watch okay so i guess i'll go ahead and do that bind the watch damn okay so i'll go ahead and scan the qr code and i'll go ahead and open the link and as you can see it links me here to open an app which i'm gonna go ahead and do okay so here we are on my phone and i'm gonna open the zep app and i need to create an account or sign in with a third party account which seems to be disabled so i guess i'll go ahead and create an account it's now asking me for my personal information which uh, i'll go ahead and fill in i guess this is useful for the health tracking okay and we are here inside the zip app now what do i do to sync uh um, ah my devices add device there we go <coughs> so watch to ensure the app is, yeah i got it while using the app actually allow all the time uh, the app needs to acquire the take photos uh, okay while using the app watch with a qr code and point the camera at the qr code keep the watch close to your phone it says okay confirm pairing on the watch which i will do bound successfully lovely sync settings uh, in your account sync the uh, yep yeah, sync okay so here's a user guide so swipe down on the watch face to view the control center swipe down swipe up wait what swipe down on the watch face to view the control center yes and then swipe up to view notifications okay fair enough swipe left or right to view the widget and shortcut cards 
All right. Press the upper button to open the app list. Swipe right on most pages to return to the previous page. Okay, fair enough. Get started. And there is obviously a system update. So we'll just wait for this guy to do its thing. Well, the download seems to be complete and now it says watch updating. I wonder whether the watch is doing something. Well, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything. It just seems to be displaying a normal watch. Oh, but it did just vibrate. Updated successfully. Ah, and now I guess it's doing its thing on the watch itself. Whilst the app waits to connect. So the update has just completed. And uh, the watch seems to be rebooting. And it says update completed. And basically it's telling us what updates were installed. All right, and now the watch shows up on my app and says 49%. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the watch now and we can see what's happening on the watch whilst I play around with the app. Okay, so uh, let's see what comes on the watch by default. So you can see here it has this interesting background and by default we have an analog face, which I guess makes sense on a round watch. This is actually going to be new for me. I've always used a square style watch. Uh, so let's see. Okay, so pressing this brings the applications. And by default, we have heart rate, blood oxygen, one tap measurement, workout and workout history, stress, activity, sleep, phone, weather, music, alarm, calendar, settings, and more stuff. I wonder what this PAI is. Uh, okay, so this is the personal activity index score health thingy. I'm not the right guy to get health advice for. Uh, swiping down from the top, you can see we have the uh, control panel. We have a torch, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's just a white screen. Fair enough. And uh, we also have theater mode. Uh, what is this? The watch screen will stay lit, which reduces battery life. Okay. Interesting. We'll keep that off. Uh, calendar. That's going to be handy once I sync my stuff to it, I hope. Uh, what else? Uh, audio level. Yeah, okay. And as I turn the crown, I get some vibrations for digital feedback and stuff. Here we have the battery and there's apparently some sort of battery server mode. What is this? Okay, so this is the brightness of the screen. It's currently at full brightness. This is... Oh my God, really loud. Okay. <clears throat> so if you lose your phone, that is apparently how you find it. It is immensely loud, but then again, I guess that's what you want. Uh, Bluetooth settings. What's this? Long press any... What? Oh, okay, screen lock. Okay, you just press and hold a button to unlock. And then we have the settings here. Watch face, display, sound, vibration, etc, etc. Okay, so yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Seems to be working just fine. And honestly, that's pretty cool. Now swiping here, you can see I have my activity view, number of steps. And here we can go back to the watch, as you can see and um we have yeah so that's the step counter here we have yeah, this is also the step counter yeah okay so i guess this is just using the, to display the steps amount of activity and your personal fitness score this is your heart rate obviously i'm not wearing the watch so that's going to be difficult uh weather and it seems to have picked up my location and as you can see it's displaying all the stuff that's pretty cool uh, this is the personal activity score thingy and music and it seems to already have something here running of fields of wheat let's see what this is
Okay, so I guess this is some sort of pre-installed song. Uh, and tapping here... Okay, so I can control either the music on the watch itself or the music on my phone, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see what else we have through here. Okay, okay so that's the weather. Uh, okay, so this is kind of like uh, an activity view. And this is where notifications come in. So technically, if I receive a notification, I should now get it on my phone. Now, uh, on my watch, rather. <laughs> now, if I look at the app, uh, we have a number of settings here. Uh, so first, if I go to the store, you can see that there are a number of watch faces that I can use. Okay. Uh, some of them analog, some of them uh, digital. Okay. And here there's watch face management. And I can choose the watch face that I want. Okay. So this is pretty cool. So if, for example, I'm really interested in weather, I can tap here. And now it should have updated the watch. Yep. As you can see, it has updated the watch face. So let's look at some other ones of these. Yep, so that one is a typical chronograph with the moon phase. And uh, here we have a chronograph with step counter and stuff like that. Okay, etc. But it does say here in the app that I can get more watch faces. And uh, as you can see here, um, it's basically a very large list of watch faces that I can use, which is pretty cool. I don't see any watch face that shows calendar information here, but I guess that's something I'll have to look at, or maybe it's something not supported. I like to have at least my upcoming appointments on the watch. <laughs> There's even a Nixie Tube style watch face here. I'm sure Mark from Tecmo would enjoy that. Although it is called metal filament. Um, yeah. Okay, so that, that's a lot to explore. And here we apparently have the top watch faces up here. Okay. So uh, besides watch faces, there are of course uh, apps here. So if I go to store, so this is just a watch face store. Okay. Uh, let's see, and then there's an app store. Here we go. And here we have apps that I can install on my watch. Now, as you can see, it is a limited set. Okay, we have some sort of GoPro control, smart home controller, water time, BMI, pregnancy assistant, watch storage space, teeth brushing, SOS flashlight, calories, and a simple calculator. Uh, so that's apparently the apps that are specifically made for this watch. If I go to notifications and reminders, I can enable some uh, alerts. Uh, so I'm going to allow Zep to access notifications from here. By the way, I am showing you this on an Android, but the, the watch is just as happy to work on iOS. Okay. Uh, so watch will vibrate upon receiving a push message. Make sure watch can receive notification alerts. Go to the... Uh, Zep should run in the background to receive app alerts. Add zip to CC exceptions. So I've enabled app alerts. However, I do need to keep the zip app running in order for this to work. Uh, I've enabled a standing reminder and then I've also enabled a do not disturb, which I'll start at around 10 p.m. I guess, or maybe 10.30. Uh, till 8 p.m. Let's see, eight, actually let's make it till seven, till 8 a.m. End time can't be earlier than start time. Really? But what if I want it to be on do not disturb during the night? Uh, wait, what? So if I wanted to end at, wait, what? Who the hell made this? Okay, so end at 7 a.m. or let's make it 7.30 and start at 10 
30. Okay, and here we see something immensely stupid. I cannot set do not disturb from the evening till the morning because the start time must be before the end time. Now, this is ridiculously stupid because that's pretty much when I want do not disturb to be on. I hope it follows the do not disturb settings of the phone, so I'll have to see this. Incoming SMS alerts, yes, I will enable that. Goal notifications, obviously you can enable that, not really something I'm interested in. Health monitoring settings, as you can see, all day health monitoring, sleep monitoring, sleep breathing, quality monitoring. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll enable that since I do have sleep apnea. Measure stress, <laughs> I'll enable it. Um, automatic blood oxygen monitor. Okay, pretty cool. Yeah, so let's say if it falls below 90, give me an alert. So that's health monitoring there. Uh, let's see, watch settings. Okay, so I can edit the quick access apps, display and press. So, okay, so all the settings from the watch I can control from here. Uh, let's see now. Workout detection category. Oh, okay. And here are the categories that it will automatically detect. So I guess I'll enable walking in my case. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, that's the only physical activity I do, and it is involuntary. GPS settings are accuracy. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Whoops, going back here. Do not disturb. Okay, so there seems to be some other do not disturb feature here. Let's see if this timed do not disturb. Let's see, start time at 10. PM 1030 and end time 730. Okay, so that seems to have been enabled. So the previous do not disturb setting was stupid, but this seems to at least make sense. Off wrist lock the band will be locked when it's removed from your list. Wait, what? The band will be locked when it's removed from your list. Okay. So I guess they mean the watch will be locked. Uh, I'll set a password here. You can set what happens when you long press the buttons. Quick access apps. Uh, okay, so these are the apps that, that are in the home screen of the phone. Wearing detection button on right. Yes, because I am right-handed. Let's see, offline voice control. Offline audio wake-up mode. Okay, this I'll have to see what this is. And system language. Okay, so that seems fine. Uh, app list management. Okay, so this is to add or remove stuff to the phone. To the watch. App settings. Find watch. I'm assuming that will make a really loud sound. So I'll, uh, yeah. Turn this feature on, turn on to be visible to nearby devices, real-time data. The... Okay, so this is for synchronization with other stuff. Okay, so that seems to be the app. Obviously, there's more to explore here, guys. For example, searching the weather location. So even the app settings can be managed here through the phone app. Okay, so now let me get my friend to send me a message. So this will, should hopefully work. And yes, I did get a message from my friend. Hi, tech guru, as you can see. So that works just fine. Now, whilst I'm wearing this, uh, I'll talk about the fit. It's very comfortable. It's very light. It literally feels like I have nothing on my hand here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool stuff. You know, nice and light and it works well. Now, interestingly, you'll notice that as soon as I do this action here, you can see that icon there. Now that's for the voice control. Okay, so let's see. Um, start workout. All right. So as you can see, even though uh, I'm not giving voice commands from my watch, it can still respond to certain voice commands 
uh, offline without even requiring internet access, which is pretty cool, I think. Okay, so I should be able to answer calls on this thing, so I'm gonna get my friend Daniel to call me. Okay, and as you can see, the call is coming in. Hello. Good afternoon, tech guru. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. I am currently talking to you from a watch that is not actually running Android. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly fine. Okay, so let me just check the volume here. Yep, it's at full volume. Okay, so, and you can hear me fine? That's brilliant. Thank you very much, sir. Much appreciated. No problem. Adios. Adios. Okay, so that worked perfectly fine. I can make and receive calls from the thing. Uh, you can actually synchronize up to 50 contacts on the watch itself to make a quick call. It unfortunately doesn't have access to all your contacts at this point. But honestly, if you have more than 50 people in your life who you call regularly enough to want on your watch, then you are a very, very popular person. Okay, so I, uh, I guess I'll keep using this for a few hours to get a better feel of it. I think you get the basic idea with what I've shown you so far. And uh, I'll give you my closing thoughts. So, what are my thoughts? Well, as far as smartwatches go, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this one. You'll notice I haven't really focused on the fitness features, since that's not really what I use a smartwatch for. Um, I use a smartwatch for three things. Knowing the time, getting notifications, and making and taking calls. And the GTR3 Pro does all three admirably. Now, from a privacy standpoint, you could argue that I've simply traded one giant corporation, Google, for another, Xiaomi. And that it's also ironic that I'm saying all of this on YouTube, <laughs> which is owned by Google. However, considering the lack of maturity of pure Linux smartwatches, I think I'll have to give myself a pass here. Besides, at least I won't need to use my Google account to download apps from the Google Play Store, since ZepOS has its own thing. Would I recommend it? Yeah. Is it the best smartwatch out there? Well, that depends on what you're looking for, but no. <laughs> the Apple Watch is objectively better, at least in my books, both in terms of build quality and feel, as well as the ecosystem. Then again, the Apple Watch is a much more expensive device, and this thing is, you know, a bit more private, and a bit more private is never a bad thing. So for my purposes, this suits me well. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and review, and if you have, please consider liking this video and subscribing to Tech Guru. Your subscription certainly helps. And if you're a superstar like the people on screen now, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon for early access to videos, your name in the credits, an exclusive chat room, and much more. Always remember, I'm also on Odyssey if you want to watch these videos outside of YouTube. Well, that's it for today. As always, thanks for watching.